Welcome to the Interloop Podcast. I'll be your host, Shane Allen, joined today by Chris Thompson, Interloop writer. You also know him from the Refined Taste Podcast. You also know him from uh, just being an all-around a hero. Right, Chris? <laughs> I do my best. I put my pants on, you know, jumping in <laughs> just it. like everybody that's else. It. Just put on my pants. I that's just put on my pants. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's good. That's all you really need these days. Honestly, that's yeah. an achievement. Post 2020. Um, at the beginning of the show, you heard a, a song that was Kids in the Basement, a fine a local band. If you would like to be featured here on the Interloop podcast, just hit us up, the Interloop blog at gmail.com. We'll point you in the right direction for that. Also, hit up patreon.com slash Interloop. Get subscribed there. It's five bucks a month. You get the podcast earlier. And soon enough, we'll probably be going Patreon exclusive because, God damn it, Chris, we. I'm trying not to make this an RPD only podcast, but they're <laughs> they're they're really forcing my hand. Like, yeah, it's it, not it's not easy. No, I I mean I don't want to break down the fourth wall, but we're like let's do we'll do we're a local news blog, right? We do parody news, we're a satire blog, so we'll do a weekly Rochester news. And like the first week, it was funny news, like there was some funny right. stuff. The, and then since then, it's been just goddamn tragedies. <laughs> and the RPD is just really forcing our hand. Um, so the story I'm, of course, talking about, if you guys missed it, um, there's a man shot and killed this week. He was uh, reportedly threatening the RPD uh, with a knife. This all happened at around 3 o'clock in the morning on Wednesday. This happened outside the Open Door Mission Yep. Um, West Main Street police reported on the scene. Uh, the guy got a hold of a knife from the open door mission and was just walking down the street with it. Eventually, he charged at a police officer. Officer shot him. Uh, I, th- I watched the video. And it was the first thing I watched, I think, Thursday morning, which is not not how you want to wake up in the morning. No. No, not at all. But I mean, honestly, it did wake me up faster than Folgers. I will say it, that. Yeah. Um, just like I, that was literally like the first thing I saw that day. Like I, I rolled over in bed, opened up my eyes, got a notification, like check out this graphic video. I was like, I'll click on it, and there it yeah. was. Um, the officer shot him. He he later died. I think in on the way to the hospital. Um, we're not gonna play the video. Oh God, this no. One. That no, seems like a bad idea. <laughs> um, maybe if we were Patreon exclusive, we can get away with it. But I think that would definitely put us in Facebook jail. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, so Captain Mark Mura is his name. He, yes. He says the RPD said the incident happened too quickly for the forensic investigation team to come. Um, they're saying it happened all within like five or six minutes. The video is pretty short. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know how much of a lead up there was before the body cams or whatever that I saw. Uh, Mayor Lovely Warren, she's come out and said that she's asking everybody to let the AG office do their review and that she's going to trust them to do the, the process. And they're going to look at policy and procedures because I think we've established already in just six weeks of existing as a podcast. Both Mayor <laughs> Lovely Warren and the Attorney General's office have totally a lot of credibility. Trusted. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Justice will be served. We've already gotten <laughs> that for sure. We'll yeah. be talking about Mayor Lovely Warren again a little bit later. And spoiler alert, not going to be great either. <laughs> um, the officer that shot uh, the man is on administrative leave currently. Um, yeah. Have, have you seen the picture of the officer? No, I've not. Oh, he looks like a bully from like a 1980s teen movie. Mm. Like he, he like almost spitting image of it. As and a man his, that looks like the guy that gets bullied in all those movies, I, you know, I can yeah, I can relate to that. Yeah, it's it's kind of scary. And then you look at his record, uh in 2018, he was written up because he was kidnapping people apparently. 
I did see that. Yeah, it was very, it was a very strange thing. And I guess this is like his idea of a joke, but he would like pick up uh, young black teens and basically displace them miles away from their home and then drop them off. So he wouldn't even take them to jail. He'd like say, you're in trouble, pick them up and put them and then just drop them off like across town or something. Like what? Like, and I know creepy. that's that's not great and all, but I know for sure, Chris, that if you put that out as like a Groupon adventure, people would definitely pay fifty bucks for that. Yeah, like, like people a, are so know, bored now. Like ride alongs. Yeah, totally. <laughs> like blindfold me and just stick me randomly somewhere, and I have to find my way home. Yeah, I'll pay fifty yeah. bucks for that. Is yeah. there a, is there a pedal pub bike there as well for me to ride home? Hell yeah. 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 Include not a couple of beers and it's done. No, not yeah, definitely not fun. A little scary. <laughs> not when you're trying to go to work. <laughs> I did see that. Yeah, somebody posted a list of his uh, previous uh, like offenses, like questionable stuff. And I saw the kidnapping one, and I was like, "Huh, this huh. is so strange. That's bizarre." Yeah, that's bizarre. So I, I don't know, um, Chris. I, I know you haven't been on the podcast in what a couple of weeks now, but uh, I, I, <laughs> my question is: Is this our fault as a podcast? Because you know, we've been coming out here and we've been saying, like, don't pepper spray kids, you know, mm-hmm. don't play tug of war with children. Uh, please, RPD, stop doing that. So mm-hmm. do you think that maybe the RPD listens to this podcast and was like, OK, we'll stop using non-lethal force like that's like they just there's miscommunication there. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Maybe it's like some weird thing where they they're doing the opposite of what we do say. So we say, hey. Don't pepper spray kids. And then the next week, you know, they're just spraying pepper everywhere. Yeah. You know, so like, and I don't, and, but then I don't want to be on record saying, hey, you maybe be. you should kill people because yeah. then they'll be, then that'll be the day they decide to yeah. <laughs> like listen to us earnestly. And I was like, oh, oh, okay. Well, we should probably kill people. Yeah. So, no, yeah, so no what, matter, I don't know. I think we're fucked. Yeah. God damn it. Yeah. There's just no winning. I don't know if they are listening, you know, hey, guys, you know, at least to sign up for the Patreon if you're going to be. Come on. Like, seriously. Yeah. Yeah. If you're taking our ideas and flipping them on their head, at least give us money for it. Maybe yeah, make you it as your look funding bad. there. Just like because I'm sick of paying my tax payer dollars to like cops who are like just killing people with mental health illnesses and, you know, pepper spraying kids. Like yeah, it is rough. Know. It is rough to be doing all this stuff during tax season, guys. Come on. Oh, my God. Very annoying. Yeah. Very annoying. Hey, hey, Rogers to police. Uh, learn how to cook and then cook for kids. Hey, yeah. see that, but that's not gonna be good. So what they heard is cook children. Cook, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's, that's not gonna that. be good. <laughs> not gonna be good, Chris. Um, now I know what our podcast is gonna be about next week. So yep, <laughs> do it in. Um, I, I I know that this is like a smaller part of it, but and I'm I don't know. The open door mission, how is there just knives uh, for the taking? Uh, you, We know what the open door mission's clientele is, you know, if people are mm. having mental health issues, that's got to get, that's got to get locked up. You know, I've, I've lived with people with mental health issues and that was the first thing to go. You know, I think I spent most of my college years without having a cutting implement anywhere. I was, I was all plastic stuff. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's rough that that happened and that it was in that situation. Also, it's like you know, like this is where the the crisis intervention teams like this is where I think a lot of people on the other side are like, um, this is this is a tough situation, right? By the way, I think mm-hmm. John's John's joining us right now. Oh, fun! There hey, he is. John. He's connected with audio. We'll, we'll fill him in. John, we're talking about the uh, RPD and the situation with um, the, the the shooting uh, of the guy at the Open Door Mission. I know you're joining in a really uh, fun time. Yeah, um, so just like the last time I was on the podcast. Oh, my it's, God, it, yeah. yeah, yeah we're just, nothing changed. <laughs> time is a flat circle. This yeah. is um, – <laughs> We're changing the name from Interlude Podcast to RPD in Review. Uh, this is right. That's, that's, a, that's a good idea. Yeah. We might as well just get them on the podcast and just, it should be them on the podcast every week. Just like, listen, we're, we're, we don't even know what we did this week, but we're just going to say sorry. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. So we I were talking about, kid, I stubbed my toe in a freaking candy machine, whatever the cops want, bring it here. 
we were yeah. talking about the open door mission and how the guy got the knife from there. And I was mm-hmm. saying how that, that stuff that's, you got to lock that stuff up. Cause I, I don't know. I I've, you know, I've lived with people that had mental health issues and I was telling Chris that like, I, I had like this, I just moved into a new house this year and this is the first time I've had like a really sharp knife and it like, it changed my life. I was like, <laughs> like, wait, people just cut carrots. Like it's easy. Like this is yeah. insane. Yeah, it's, it's like cutting through butter. I would have to like bite things to cut it and like bite and spit. It was not good, but I'm just saying open door. I'm not saying the open door mission needs to chew everybody's food for them, but I'm just saying there's gotta be a better way than leaving loose knives everywhere. Um, Although so, this does explain why your chili was always kind of gross to me. Yeah, well, it's, I ba- it's a baby bird situation, you know, yeah. a little pre-shoot. Um, I was wondering, because like, like, I know we're joking about it, but like, this is every fucking week with the RPD. So I was mm-hmm. like, is this is this an RPD thing? Is this an American thing? Is this a Rochester thing? So I looked at... Um, three similar sized cities to Rochester, right? So like this mm-hmm. by population. So I looked at Birmingham, Alabama, and I was like, they they got to have at least one police type of situation. And I looked throughout the entire week. The worst thing I could find was the, the house voted to lift the ban on yoga in Alabama public schools. That's what they're <laughs> dealing with what? in Birmingham. <laughs> Alabama. <laughs> Like, wouldn't that be glorious if that was an issue? Oh, my God. <laughs> that, that place with? used to be called Bombingham, <clears throat> and now they're, they're... I didn't even know they banned yoga in the well, first And now place. they lifted it. Now, yeah. Well, so great. It can be Good very nimble that, right? down there in Alabama, um, which they should be nimble in Alabama. I know this is the like, getting off subject, but, like, if you're going to ride a bull, it's going to be in Alabama, and you got to be flexible as fuck for that. But. True. Um, Santa Clarita, California, also similar size to Rochester. Oh. Their biggest issue this week was they have revealed the new mm-hmm. ice rink's name, and it's the Cube, which I feel like that's a little too futuristic for me. It seems like you're going to be going there to skate, but that's, stuck I there for cute. all of time. You know, like I'm going to the Cube. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> I'm stuck at the Cube. Um. <laughs> Once I again, mean, if see, you're stuck in the cube, you can't get shot by the cops. Yeah, I was gonna say, our Rochester's version <laughs> of the cube is jail. There's your mental health issues right there. Yeah, right there exactly. <laughs> when you say like you're going to the cube yeah. in Rochester, that means you are going to jail. That's all that means. Uh, in D- Des Moines, yeah, Iowa, yeah, central booking. Uh, Des Moines, Iowa, also similar size to Rochester. Their biggest news story this week, but none of these have like police things going on. Des Moines, Iowa, the World Pork Expo is returning to Des Moines in June. So that's where they're at. You know, we we don't even have news that the Lilac Festival is for sure coming back. They got the World Pork Expo. So, so Man, fun, fun fact. Uh, when I was reading the show notes, I misread that is World Park Expo. <laughs> and I was like, why would it be in Des Moines, Iowa? But now hearing it as pork, this makes Perfect sense. Yeah. 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 Go Des Moines. Not a lot of park. Uh, is there parks there? I don't and know. They're pigs. like, they're landlocked. I mean, RIP right? all those The pigs, whole state is but... a fucking park. It's all flyover, right? Yeah, this they're is... landlocked. It's... We should have that here. Yeah, right? We got a bunch farmland. of great parks in Rochester. I mean, this is true. Just saying. Yeah, uh, we should so, have a park expo. So I think what I'm just trying to say is I think this is a Rochester thing. And if Nick Tahoe's is going away, I guess all we have now in Rochester is we have a really bad police uh, you know, situation going on. So this is all we got now as a yeah. culture in Rochester is yeah, bad I think, police. Uh, so, I don't know. I think we need to stop having these police act like old school Birmingham and get back to banning yoga and lifting the bands. That's what we need. <laughs> I want That's, yoga in Rochester. What, what if we have the cops do yoga? What if we get them all geared down yoga pants, walk the streets? You think mm-hmm. that would help at all? Right, now they're it, too, I mean, too possibly. Flexible. Too flexible now. Now you can't they're get gonna away at all. <laughs> yeah, That's true. Maybe at you. They're going to be sure. like, they're going to be choking you out with their like pinky toes and stuff. Like they'll put you some <laughs> weird grapple, you know, <laughs> be rough. <laughs> Um, so I guess uh, this is another chance for the inner loop to try to solve the RPD. Um, I don't know if you guys have any new solutions um, for them. This is my pitch 
which is like, I know we want to take away their guns. Like we want to go full England, right. Where they're just running around mm-hmm. with batons there and non-lethal stuff. And honestly, it makes their TV shows much better. So that's a plus, right. It very it, much does. Cause like, yeah. you'll be watching like a British TV show with cops and you're like, why does, why don't they just shoot this guy? And they're like, Oh, that's right. They don't have guns. So they have to like, yeah, they write, think. yeah they have to, like a plot and like, you know, <laughs> What's his face? Is that uh, Luther? He's got that big old coat. Uh, yeah. Idris Elba. He's just looking hot as hell. You want yeah. to see that here. Yeah. Um, but here's my here's my sitch. So the you can keep your guns, RPD, but if you shoot someone, you you're done. Like you're you're off the force. Uh, you you don't. You, maybe you lose your pension, um, or at least like a percentage of it. So like you you can be a cop as long as you want, but as soon as you discharge your firearm, that's it. It's like also I feel like once it's like a once you pop, you kind of stop type of thing. Like once, oh, yeah. you, once you shot yeah. a guy and then you like you, you like nothing happens. Right. Mm-hmm. Then I feel like you're like, oh, there's like shoot more people. So like, uh, yeah, why not? I'm just saying like you, you can have your gun, but if you use it, that's it. Like I, I feel like it's a, an NFL incentive type of thing where it's like, hey, you get like five touchdowns, you get a big old bonus. So maybe every year, if you don't shoot a guy, we give you a bonus. Like maybe we need more positive reinforcement for them. I don't know. I don't know, I guess how, how you feel about my RPD. I, I would add on to that and say like every time you get an infraction or any type of complaint, because it's not just the guns, it's a pepper spray too. They're deploying it on kids so like anytime they do something like that uh they get like an extra ten thousand dollars taken off their pension Mm. so like every single time they do something so like you know if you've got like a a a sheet like uh, mike mazio the president of the locust club where he's got like actual larcenies on his record like why not you know just keep chopping away at the pension. So by the time they retire, it's like, well, um, congratulations, but here's your $5 pension because, you know, all sure. the things you did. Yeah, it's like, uh, I think of it like a video game, right? You have like, you have the easy mode of policing, which you can go bang, bang, shoot, shoot. Or mm-hmm. you have like the expert level, which is like, you got to like talk down situations and you got to like yeah. de-escalate things and not kill people. That'd be like yeah. the expert mode. And that's when you get like the big fat pension, like the fattest pension yeah. ever for like being a really good cop. So yeah, maybe it's like, instead of, I know that we've been coming out like clearly negative is not working with podcasts, right? Mm-hmm. We've been going hard <laughs> against them and it's not working. So yeah, so let's do some, I guess we got to go positive. Like, yeah. Kind of like GTA, except like opposite, like you're doing, not crimes. Yes. Instead of crimes. I <laughs> and, get but this. you you can still go to strip clubs and see weird pixelated boobs. I mean, let that happen. Yeah. Yeah. Thank God for that. I think everybody likes a good pixelated boob. Like the barrel is definitely in GTA. And, <laughs> yeah. and I support this. Support sure. your support your local strip club. Got it. It's a job just like everyone else. That's part of the pension. You get yeah. lifetime. If you don't kill anybody as the RPD, you get lifetime status at the barrel. You know, yes. you nice. get bottle bottle service anytime you walk in there. It won't be good bottle service. It's going to be a bottle of Jenny Light, but it's bottle service. <laughs> it's bottle service. I yeah. hear the wings are dope, though. I got to say. I At the barrel? The dope. Yeah. Do they do takeout? I wonder. We should I w- find out. I mean, I've heard about, like, I, all these other cities that were doing, like, they're trying to support their strippers and stuff like that. So they were doing mm-hmm. takeout, but they were having the strippers bring it out to the cars, you know, doing the, <laughs> yeah. doing the stripper thing. But I, I don't know, maybe it was just because Rochester's too cold for that, but they didn't, yeah, I didn't hear anybody it. doing that. It's it's a bit nippy. Like uh, a tip, a tip that that's definitely out. a summertime yeah. activity. Nippy. Good one, Chris. Ah, you oh son, yeah. You son of a bitch. Accidental <laughs> puns. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I don't know if you guys want to play a new game, which I think is going to become a weekly segment now, which is uh, guess the next RPD headline for this week, because clearly Ooh, okay. it's a weekly thing. I'll, I'll take a first crack at it, and then you guys can jump in. Um, oh, I got a big old cardinal in my backyard. Sorry. Nice. I'm like a, I'm like a dog. Uh, RPD accidentally orders lemon pepper spray wings. Just, I don't know, maybe mm. something like that. I'm trying mm. to be like more fun with it because I, I, I feel like if we're being serious about it, it's going to be way too tragic and everybody's going to shut off this podcast. But um, 
I know. Do you guys have a prediction for next week's uh, headline? Yeah. Um, RPD tases grandmother accidentally defibrillates her. She comes back to life. Wow. That's wow. Yeah. That would be a heartwarming tale. Yeah. That would be on Disney Plus like the next week. <laughs> yes. John, I don't know, do you have a, a prediction for what you think we'll be talking about next week with the RPD? I don't know. I mean, I really don't. <laughs> I'm just scared. Yeah. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's the, that's I the headline, that's the headline right there. Better. RPD, the headline. I'm scared. <laughs> Rochester, <laughs> Rochester scared. Yeah. Rochester allowed to now go back outside because of, uh, you know, quarantines being lifted, but we're going to stay inside because we're scared. Yeah. Um, I don't know. We don't really have to get too deep into it because, um, I mean, this just came out yesterday, so I haven't really, you know, uh, read a lot into it. But the independent investigation into the Daniel Prude case dropped mm -hmm. and it did find that surprise city officials did suppress info from that situation. Um, it doesn't it didn't really get into I mean, I haven't read the report. Uh, the specifics were it says that um, Mayor Lovely Warren was not alone, solely responsible for suppressing stuff, which also means that she was suppressing stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Police Chief Laurent Singletary continuously de-emphasized the role of police in Prude's death. Um, they're saying the report is saying that likely impacted how city officials viewed the matter. Um it says that uh, August 2020, corporate counsel Tim Curtin discouraged Warren from publicly disclosing the arrest, citing reasons that were believed to be factually incorrect. Um, mm. Also, and this one uh, this sucks, um, but uh, council member Mary Lupian was found to well, found out about the arrest in July and elected not to speak about it publicly or alert city officials, mm. um, which Mary, come on. I did it. That's her shtick, isn't it? Isn't that her shtick? Like bringing to light all the social injustices. Yeah. She, she like, failed to yeah. do that one. What the heck? Mary, I did, I did a, did a dang comedy show for you, for? Mary. Come on. It's Ooh, almost like my did. jokes didn't work. Chris, were you on that show? I I attended. I wasn't on the show, but I attended. Oh no! Well, that's a good that thing you didn't perform. Four times. It's a that good thing you didn't perform because now look at me. Now I'm implicated in all of this. I'm gonna be going to jail. <laughs> I'm going to the cube. But don't man. worry, you won't go. You won't go to jail for this. This is a. Oh, that's true. Get away. But I don't know. <laughs> this this seems like it's a pretty inflammatory report that's coming out, and which means that nothing is gonna happen. All right. That's yep. uh, that's another staple of this podcast is what we're finding out is uh, just this like is crazy that there's a report that's like, oh, yeah, everybody was hiding all this stuff. It seems like we should. Uh, I don't know. This is a pitchfork time. Maybe I mean, it's kind of yeah. it's kind of what we all thought was going to happen with the little tidbits of information that came out prior to this full investigation. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, we kind of heard echoes of like, oh, yeah, this whispers like this. This is what they, they knew about it. And they elected not to say anything about it. Mm -hmm. And now, oh, surprise, it's true after yeah. like, the investigation came out. So, I mean, it's just sad because I feel like uh, the whole lovely Warren's administration has been kind of criticized about these these types of incidents. <laughs> I mean, pretty much the whole time mm -hmm. he's been in office. I'm not wrong, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, and they, I mean, sad. and they knew that all this stuff was going on, that she was under investigation for not only this, but the, the campaign fraud stuff and um, – uh, and they still, she's still going to run again and not resigning yeah. and all that stuff. It's like, when do you care more about the people versus your self image? Like what, what what's it going to take to, uh, uh, to change that? You know, that, that's what I don't understand. It's going to be a slow, like, slow roll of all this stuff too. This is going to be going on yeah. forever. This is yeah. going to be, yeah. This is a conversation we're going to be having forever. Cause she's not just sticking around. I mean, mm -hmm. Well, I think I think we should look on. There is a silver lining to this. Like, you know how we always trash government, but like this report shows that the government will work if they just work together as a team. True. And uh, the, it was a lot of teamwork to cover this up. So, you know, good for good for that. Too bad it was against, you know, the people of Rochester. But 
at least we know that the government works when it wants to. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it gives you a better just, idea like, of why it took anything. so long for that uh, Rock really City problem. Skate Park to open, right? Just like they keep on just pushing stuff off and hiding the paperwork and finally got those ramps up. <laughs> yeah, that was years in the making. Got Next thing we're going to we're gonna learn there's a bunch of there's like hundreds of homeless people buried under the skate park now. Oh, it took so long. That would take too much work. Oh, I can't. I think. I'm, I'm, so? Yeah, <laughs> a little too much. Yeah, somebody's gonna be skating the pool. All of a sudden, there's like a hand. Oh, <laughs> that would be dope though. That'd be a really cool premise. Some for guy a, saying, "Avenge me." Yeah, a Rochester uh, zombie film. Let's, let's see. Like there's that. gonna be a Netflix documentary about it soon enough. That'd be dope. Um, so now that we have talked about how the RPD is no fun yeah, and uh, our local government uh, is a stinky pile of cheese, let's talk about um, this hero in Rochester, right? A palate cleanser, um, a man rescued an elderly couple. I'm going to share my screen. I know if you guys can hear this. Uh, it's a video from Spectrum News. Okay. You guys hear her? David Lovett. Uh, nope. Yep. Across the street. He immediately jumped into action yep. and ran inside barefoot to save the elderly couple that lived here. I couldn't see her. All I could do was hear her. All I could do was hear her. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? And I just just reaching, just reaching for her. And I finally got her, picked her up, brought her up. Lovett says there was no time to find his shoes. <laughs> this is Rochester's John McClane. Dude's got I no love shoes. The close up of the shoes. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're like, yeah. well, he found him now for the interview. But, but then they went have. close up on his shoes in the newsreel. <laughs> yeah. Dude's got the, uh, yeah, quite the get up, man. If he, he was wearing those, he would have made it in the house faster. Yeah. That, that, is, that is fantastic. But he asked for Lovett's help. He was on the porch, and he said, "Go get her, please." That's something anybody would do. Oh, okay. Thanks, my wife called nine one one. Oh man, my computer's terrible. The Rochester Fire Department acknowledged. All right. Well, my computer's terrible. But there we go. We got a hero in Rochester. He's running into burning nah, buildings. Nah, that's all good. But we get the gist. Yeah. He ran in there, no shoes. And his gear is tight. Like, when he does have shoes on, he wears the fuck out of those shoes. <laughs> yeah. Those shoes were amazing. That I whole also, outfit was amazing. I think I in that, to be like that. I think in that short 30 seconds that my computer would let me uh, run that clip, I think he had, like, two or three mask changes. And, like, I don't want to, like, listen, I, he's a hero, and I'm, I'm glad and everything, but can you can you wear the mask? Above your nose. I know it's a little, it's like I, I'm, I'm being, you know, a little nitpicky here, but just put it. Yeah. Yeah. Put it I, up. I, I just, yeah. I was, uh, I was a little, I was a little bothered by it, but like given that he like ran into a burning building, I'm going to give it to <laughs> him. Um, he, he'll be the only person I won't like shame. It's like, <laughs> you know, like, hey, Superman, can you just like, I would put on shoes. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Superman, can you save me with less force? You like you just, hurt me just, a little bit. Just, just nose it up a little bit. It's like all those people that get mad at like <laughs> firefighters that saved their life for like breaking their ribs while they're giving them life saving CPR. It's like, what do you want? Like, do you want to be yeah. alive? <laughs> I don't know what you're on. Uh, no, I mean that's yeah. <laughs> My question for you guys is, I mean, this dude legit ran into this house, no shoes, got this old lady out of there. Um, definitely, you know, better than the dad in uh, This Is Us. I don't know what happened to that show. I've never watched it. Something about that guy died, right? Um, but would you guys do this? Do you think you guys have what it takes to run into a burning building? I know, Chris, would you run into a burning building? Yes, but I'd find my shoes first. I would, I would, I would put on shoes. Got it. I think, I, like, I think... I think I would do it just because, you know, I've already like faced down enough shit. I've been shot at before. Like what's, you know, what's some smoke inhalation at this point? Were you wearing shoes when you got shot at? Hell, I'd do it like if they were like, oh no, my Monopoly game. 
Oh, uh, last time I got a shot at. Well, I got a shout out by the RPD, but that was pepper spray. Okay. Um, which also <laughs> makes you choke. Uh, but yeah, there were a couple, I don't God, there were a couple of times I got shot at. Were you wearing shoes? Yeah, just throughout. Yeah, you got to have shoes. A lot as a teenager. I was wearing oh, shoes though. Okay, good. I was wearing shoes. I haven't been shot at barefoot. So, <laughs> John, what do you think? If you're uh, if you're like your neighbor's house was on fire, would you run in and and help somebody? You know, I'd like to think I would, but, you know, with COVID, I'd really hope they'd be wearing a mask while they were burning alive. At least, yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah, at, the very, I mean... at the minimum. It's, and then if I do, I'd have to maintain six feet apart. So I'd have to drag them by a rope or something sure. out of that's the true. burning house. You know, it's that's true. Yeah, it's know, really, it's, it's really complicated things. Ooh, get a, it's get a complicated broomstick. situation. I don't know. Yeah. I think, I think so, a broomstick. That would help. I, I don't think of myself as a particularly courageous person. But I think I would um, just because I'm so damn um, nosy that I would just I'd be spending most of my time looking at my neighbor's shit, you know, like, oh, this kitchen sucks ass. My God, <laughs> I'm glad it's on fire. This place, is, this place is a goddamn dump. All right, Mary Sue. All right. Get out of there. Yeah. Get out of your bedroom. We'll, you know, but yeah, I'd definitely be judging the shit out of their house. So definitely. I, Actually, one of my neighbor's houses did bur- uh, set on fire uh, a couple of weeks ago. Oh, geez. And, th- and that's why how I know I'm so nosy because, like, now I have changed my uh, route to work so I can drive past their house and look at it every day. Like, look at that bird house. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> like, every day it kind of folds in a little bit more on itself. So, like, I can, like, now I can see into their bedroom. And it's like, Ew, they're, you know. Those sheets, snakes, not for me. <laughs> um, so that's going to do it for the interlude podcast. Um, I don't know if you guys have, we usually do a bit with Michael when he's here where we, we, we ask everybody, what is the most Rochester thing you've done this week? I don't know if you guys have anything that comes to mind. I can tell you mine, um, which is uh, my, my buddy, Justin actually just had a, a baby boy he, named Ross. So I did a little copyright infringement and I made a label uh, uh, printed over a jar of boss sauce, made some Ross sauce. Uh, nice. That, that's what nice. I did. Um, and I, I don't know if they have fed the baby boss sauce yet, but I think you have to, um, to like, you know, yeah. um, immunize them for Rochester. You have to rub at least a little bit of boss sauce on their gums or something. While right, they're teething. Right. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys had anything that comes to mind that uh, was particularly Rochesterian of you. I don't know if you guys perhaps ran into a burning building and saved some people in your bare feet. Could be a Rochester thing. I didn't do that, but I did run into Nino's, uh, the the taco place up the street on Monroe, right next to JD Oxford. And I witnessed the running of the green where like everybody is is same Patty's Day weekend right now. So it was just like a herd of people dressed in green heading to or from the bars that surround Nino's. So, so people uh, are out and about right now. Huh? Oh, people are out and oh, about. Wow. Um, wow. Are they letting a lot of people in the bars? It looked they were letting enough people for there to be a line. Yikes. So I don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not going to say which bar it was. I'm just going to say it rhymed with. Bailey Boxford. Mm. So. Uh, that's my favorite porn star, actually. Yeah, <laughs> Bailey Boxford. <laughs> Books, the uh, buxom woman, very large. Breasts. Yes, yes, she's <laughs> known for that. John, uh, did you happen to go out to the bar with the six of your best friends for uh, St. Patrick's Day, or what? You, you know you, what did I didn't. Anything? I go didn't, ahead. but uh, you know, I purchased some Jenny Light, you know, and I drank it, and I immediately remembered. Why I shouldn't have done that the next morning. So <laughs> while well, I was sitting on the toilet. So I feel yeah. like that's a that's a pretty Rochester thing to do, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I I've actually heard that uh, Rochester General is now recommending you drink a thirty rack of it before surgery to really clear yourself mm-hmm. out to get your Yeah, I drank uh, I drank Jenny Light for my colonoscopy. Yeah. Right before my colonoscopy. I'm gonna remember that for the next one. Yeah. You gotta. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, guys, thanks for coming on to the podcast, and um, we'll uh, be safe out there and enjoy uh, life in Rochester. And if you're listening to the podcast, thank you. Uh, hit up patreon.com slash interloop, 
And uh, we'll most likely be talking about the RPD next week. I don't know. Stick around. We have the entirety (laughs) of the song from Kids in the Basement. Once again, if you want your music featured on the podcast, hit us up, uh, theinnerloopblog at gmail.com, and we'll get your music on here. We uh, go back and listen to uh, one of our old podcasts because John's band is on there. We debuted one of his songs. How uh, And you guys, that's out now, right, from uh, Hollowell? Yep, Don't Care by Hollowell, streaming uh, everywhere where you can get listen to your music. Huh? Amazon, Spotify, we're on YouTube, wherever. What? Check it out. I rap on it. I do terrible, but it's great at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm for it. I'm yep. for it. <laughs> I'm for it. All right. Next time, if uh, if it's an RPD story, we're just going to skip it and we're just going to have John rap for an hour. I think that's what it is. Yeah. It can't be any less depressing, honestly. Hi, right, boys. <laughs> Talk to you later. All right, right, guys. Be well. See ya.